Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 601. Possible Early Complaints After the Initial Testosterone Pellet Insertion for Women. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we are going to talk about some of the things that come up in my office practice when I use testosterone pellets for women. In fact, almost every woman that comes to my practice is um, going to get testosterone pellets. They basically self-select for the side effect, or excuse me, for the symptoms of testosterone deficiency before they even come. Some women need estrogen, But today we're just going to talk about testosterone pellets and some of the complaints I get initially, like in the first four months of of treating somebody with testosterone pellets. First of all, let me explain that testosterone pellets are long-acting. They are placed under the skin and they dissolve slowly over time and they uh, provide enough testosterone for four months. They last in your body longer but you do get enough testosterone for four months at a clinically active level. So because of that, and because you're not taking a pill every day, you have to be more skilled and have more experience with pellets to make everything go smoothly and have your patient respond uh, and also um, get rid of or or treat all of the uh, complaints they had that they came in Uh, to be treated for, but also you don't want to cause more problems. You don't want to cause more complaints. So of all the different kinds of testosterone, the the type or the form of testosterone that gives patients the fewest complaints is testosterone uh, in pellet form. So that's why I use them. But in the first four months, uh, we get several uh, repeat problems, complaints from our patients that we handle over um, online or over the phone. So I want to reassure you that this is normal for the practice of medicine. If you practice medicine, you are not going to get away with never having a complaint or a side effect or something the patient wants to ask you about uh, for any type of treatments. That's just normal. Learning how to handle a uh, side effect or a complaint is actually um, actually shows that you are an expert in your field. If you don't know how to handle the side effects or problems, that is an issue for being a doctor. But uh, I've done this for 20 years now, and so I've heard every complaint, every issue that comes up. And today we're going to talk about the issues that come up in the first four months after starting pellets for women. So... um, we, have, we will have a discussion of the long-term uh, issues or, or complaints at a later date. So uh, this is not the sum total of the, the questions patients have when they get pellets. Um, the good news about the immediate problems patients have is that they are temporary. They don't last. And they are related to the testosterone pellets being placed and a woman's body getting used to having testosterone again. The four uh, major issues are um, patients call and say that they have vaginal itching or they're worried that they have a vaginal infection and that is something that we deal with. It's not an infection. It is a response to the testosterone, uh, a new hormone going to the pelvis and giving the vagina and the vulva the feeling of being itchy. The second is um, an enlargement of the clitoris. That's a normal side effect that, co- that goes away. It's temporary. And it's something that we deal with 
all the time. Patients go, oh, my clitoris is enlarged. What does that mean? Well, it means it's going to go back down. The clitoris shrinks when you lose your testosterone, and it comes back and is normal size after testosterone, but there's a short period of time immediately after insertion of the pellets that you do get an over-engorgement of the clitoris. So it's larger than usual, and that's what disturbs my patients. But reassurance is what we, what we tell them. One of the other issues is called is hypersexuality, hyper where for the first maybe six weeks, you are um, you feel sexually stimulated by anything. I mean, you know, the mailman goes by. You may be going, oh yeah, I never I never noticed this before, but you know, he's nice looking or whatever. I mean, you you know what you think of when when something like that happens. But this is much more accentuated in the first four months, and it goes away. We can't even make this happen. If we wanted to make it happen again, it's not going to happen because your body gets used to testosterone. So this is a short-term problem, and you just have to kind of keep your head down for, for six weeks at the very beginning. And the last is weight gain, which we will address, and uh, is often not truly weight gain, but, but we'll talk about that. Um, the why do patients have this immediate um, problem with these four things? And they're all related to the fact that women who come to see me generally have not had testosterone for quite a while. They have developed a number of symptoms, uh, such as low libido or painful intercourse, or um, they can't think anymore, or they they are their muscles have gone away, they're fatigued, they're they, they can't exercise like they used to. Many, there's many symptoms of low testosterone. They've developed these symptoms. It's taken time to get there after their testosterone was at a critically low level. When they come back and I treat them, the testosterone, even though it's it, in a pellet form, it slowly goes up. It's not a, a, a fast rise, but it does bring a hormone that hasn't been to been in their body for a long time, and all of a sudden the body responds to it. What that does is, in scientific terms, the woman's receptor sites, all the cells have receptor sites to testosterone, and when they've been starved, basically all the receptor sites stand open, waiting for testosterone to circulate through the blood. And when it does happen and when there is enough testosterone that is circulating, all the receptor sites fill up and the patient has an uh, enlarged or a uh, accentuated reaction to this testosterone. But the body is very good at bringing this back down. It closes some of the receptor sites and that overreaction just becomes a normal reaction to testosterone over the first four months. Sometimes it happens really fast, that it goes down to normal. Sometimes it takes a little longer, usually not the full four months. But this is something that um, we hear of a lot. We hear these uh, problems, and we are confident in saying these will go away after the first, uh, first four months is up or within the first four months. Um, one of the things that I found to be very um, helpful to our patients is that I will tell the patients that these are problems that could happen and that they might have these issues, but don't worry because they are going to reverse and be more normal. Maybe not normal like they were when they had no testosterone, but normal like they were when they were 35 or 38 their, when their testosterone was normal. Everybody has a different reaction to testosterone. Everybody has a normal for themselves. Some people are highly sexed because their receptor sites are very sensitive and it makes them more highly sexed just in general. Genetically, that's who they are. Some people have receptor sites that are very resistant to testosterone and they get their own sex drive back. You don't get the sex drive of somebody else when we give you testosterone. You get your own sex drive back. So there's nothing to be worried about too much sex drive. It will become your normal sex drive because your body will manage this hormone. 
and make you feel like you used to. That's the whole idea. But the most important part is, is telling our patients, informing them that these things could happen in the first four months. And the way we do that is, this is on the consent that we have patients sign when they are getting testosterone and or estrogen. We also have this uh, all over our, our website. You can find these uh, the information about the side effects or the possible problems patients have with testosterone. And we give them a post uh, pellet insertion handout that's many pages long that tells you everything that, that you could possibly feel or come and uh, uh, actually experience after you get your pellets, both immediately and long term. So we do inform and tell our patients these things, and sometimes it's verbally. Sometimes if I know somebody is having problems with uh, maybe not having a partner, then I, I warn them that they are going to have more sex drive, and so they're going to have to figure out on their own how they'll handle that, but it will go away. It is not forever. So that's the reassurance and the reminding that we do either by email or over the phone, and we try to make our patients have the proper expectations so that they're not, they're not worried about it and, and stew about it for four months before they come back. So this is, this is one of the things that doctors who do pellets deal with all the time. Now, let's talk about the vaginal itching because that's a, that's a big deal because it makes people uncomfortable. It makes them feel like they can't sit in public. They feel like they're moving around a lot. And the itching really is, is significant in some people. Uh, it's not an infection. You shouldn't go to your doctor and ask, or your gynecologist and say, you know, I have vaginal itching and have them look for an infection that isn't there. I mean, it is basically secondary to the blood flow that begins to go to your pelvis when testosterone is added to your bloodstream. All of a sudden, it calls blood to go to, go to your vulva and your vagina, your clitoris, the area right around, right around the vagina. And so you have some swelling initially. It doesn't stay. And you have itching because the nerves are actually activated. And when nerves are activated, they kind of itch. So it feels like vaginal itching from, from a yeast infection, basically, but that there's usually no discharge that is white or thick. You have normal discharge that's just clear. So, or you may not have any discharge, but there is itching. So what can be done about that? In general, um, you can use like a Benadryl cream, or you can use Benadryl, take Benadryl orally, although it can make you tired, so I wouldn't do it during the day. And uh, we also suggest cold packs. So cold packs put on the, on the vulva usually is the best answer, but not, I, I understand that you can't put cold packs on all day. So that, that is some, a time you may want to use the, the anti-itch Benadryl creams that they have over the counter. So that, that's how we do it. We also suggest if you have to, uh, if you have to work or you have something you have to do during the day and you're still itching, then you can use the, um, anti the allergy pills like Claritin that are not going to make you sleepy. So that's, those are my suggestions. Those are over the counter and they work, but this doesn't last very long. It's usually less than a week that somebody might experience this and it, it just goes away. It doesn't happen again. Um, and it, so you don't have to foresee that this is going to happen with each insertion. Um, Okay, let's talk about clitoral enlargement. Um, the clitoris is um, obviously a, a sexually stimulated area. When you lose your testosterone, the clitoris loses blood flow. It loses, uh, ner the nerves are not as active going to that area. You're not as sensitive. Uh, and it, for stimulation, you're not gonna get the same kind of orgasms or sexual response if you don't have testosterone. So when you haven't had testosterone for a long time, the clitoris gets very small. If it goes on for a decade, for 10 years, then you're very likely not to be able to even find your clitoris. It'll be so small that it'll hide under the hood of the clitoris and you won't be able to find it. It'll be so small. And without testosterone and or estrogen, the vagina gets really small, so small that, um, 
just a Q-tip may be able to be passed uh, into the vagina, like for a pap smear. I'm, I've, I've taken care of women who have had years of no testosterone and no estrogen, and this is real. I mean, your vagina just basically gets so small that there's no way you could use it for intercourse. It would be um, traumatic. Uh, the skin gets very thin without testosterone. It's very fragile. You can get little little cuts or bleeding areas if uh, if the skin is stretched in any way. So it's a it's a big deal. You really do need testosterone and estrogen or testosterone alone to bring these tissues back to health. Well, when we do bring the tissues back to health, we're reversing this whole process. We're bringing blood flow back, and the nerves are starting to wake up, and the blood flow is making the clitoris enlarge and over the first few months, it can actually become larger than it was before it started shrinking. Your labia can become enlarged. You can feel like you're swollen, as my patients say, down there. Uh, and that's a perfectly normal response to having testosterone. You, most women who don't have testosterone for years lose hair that they used to have on the labia majora or hair around the uh, vulva. So this is something that will start coming back, you'll start growing hair there again, and uh, that's response to testosterone. This clitoral enlargement doesn't last forever, and it's not worrisome. It is not something that means that something bad is happening. However, since I have been trained as a gynecologist and practiced for 29 years in gynecology, I know that we are trained to look at the clitoris, and if it's enlarged, go, there's something wrong. Well, <laughs> that, is a, that is a warning sign for a gynecologist to look for a tumor that makes testosterone after menopause. But if you're taking testosterone, your clitoris should be normal. It should be like it was before menopause. It should be uh, somewhat enlarged for your stage in life. That is not worrisome. That is not something that will hurt you. The only reason gynecologists get excited about it is because that's what we were trained. We were trained, uh-oh, there's something wrong. Well, then if they think about it, if somebody's on testosterone, then it should be a normal-sized clitoris or a clitoris that looks like there's blood flow to it after menopause. So it is, it's, a, it's something that, that patients get scared by their gynecologist often and then call us in, in a state of uh, worry. Uh, if someone is so worried about the, the size of their clitoris. I mean, generally, I tell people, well, at least your partner can find it now because now it's not hidden under the clitoral hood. But if they're worried about it and, it's, and it really is something that gives them anxiety, which I don't want anyone to have, I don't want someone to worry about something that's not going to hurt them. But I don't treat their anxiety with anti-anxiety agents. I will give them some estradiol cream. Estradiol on the clitoris or rubbed onto the clitoris will make it less sensitive and it'll make it shrink and it'll counteract the activity of the testosterone. So that's one thing I can do um, in severe cases or severe worry. I can use some, something called finasteride, which is what men use. So Propecia is finasteride. Um, we can use that for a short term to get the clitoris to shrink down, but you're also going to counteract some of the good parts of testosterone, like your sex drive. Uh, and, the, and the energy that you get from testosterone is going to be counteracted by finasteride too. So the good and the bad are going to uh, be affected. Something that you have to, in your own mind, decide whether that would be something that you're so worried about this issue that you have to have it treated that you might lose the benefits of getting your testosterone pellets to begin with. Um, hypersexuality is not usually a problem um, for patients who have a partner. If they have a willing partner, it's usually um, for them exciting, wonderful. They finally get their, they get their uh, sexual partner back in a way that is uh, they haven't experienced for a while. They finally have their wives back or their, or their partners back, and they're very happy generally. Now, the place where we have problems with hypersexuality is if somebody doesn't have a partner, then we have to encourage them to use or buy a vibrator 
and use that for a short period of time. They may not use it, need it again, but this is something that we do advise our patients on. Um, we also advise telling your spouse that this isn't going to be the way it is forever. You're going to go back to your normal. It's, you're not going to be hypersexual forever. You're not, and we worry about you exhausting them, um, especially if they're having some trouble with their erections. Then this can be stressful for them. So you have to tell them, don't worry, this is not going to be like this forever. It's just a, at the very beginning of the very first pellet insertion. And even if some of our patients like this kind of feeling, uh, or the couples like it, I can't make it happen again because it is just the overreaction of testosterone on your receptor sites that your body is going to modulate very soon and make normal. So your body is going to take care of this, but I can't make it happen again. Now, the last complaint that we see um, is weight gain after the pellets. That I don't usually see this, but Pellets with testosterone alone generally do not cause water retention. They don't cause weight gain, fat gain. They don't cause fat gain. They cause muscle gain. So you can, if you're an ex person who exercises and have been getting nothing in terms of muscle mass out of your exercising, your muscles are going to get bigger and therefore they're going to weigh more. And what should happen in a person with normal metabolism is their muscles get bigger, they burn their fat, so they are smaller, but they may stay the same weight. Now, people who have a metabolic issue with weight loss, maybe they have insulin resistance, maybe they have a, um, a genetic problem where they never feel full when they eat, or they always feel hungry. This is not going to fix that problem. All it is going to do, testosterone is going to do, is to make you be able to make muscle, and then muscle is the largest organ of your body that burns calories. So if you make your muscles bigger and more active metabolically, you're going to eventually burn a lot more calories than if you don't have muscle. The people that I want to have more muscle are especially the skinny fat people, people who have a, a high fat percentage and have no muscle. Testosterone bothers them because they start making muscle so they may see their muscle grow faster than their fat goes away. So those are people that I want to make muscle and eventually the fat will go, go down as the muscle burns more calories. We use, a, a, we use something called an in-body and the in-body is a, a weighing scale that tells you where the fat and the muscle and the, and the uh, bone and uh, basically is in your body also the water and that helps us handle weight gain. We can then measure it, tell the patient, look, your muscle went up from before when you came in with no testosterone, and that weight gain is eventually going to help you burn calories and burn fat. Um, so we do a pre-in body and we do a post-in body, and therefore we can show the difference in body composition to a patient. And that's reassuring because that means that if they exercise, if they eat properly, and, and or if we need to give them medication for their metabolic problem, they will get the body that they want. It just will take more time than four months. I can't say that people don't lose weight. They often do lose weight in the first four months as much as 30 pounds in the first four months. But that is, that's exceptional. That's not typical. And that is somebody who's really aggressively dieting and exercising together. So if, you, if we can't get your, your um, weight to go down, then your, um, we have to, with lifestyle changes, then we have to use medication for weight loss. This is what the end body looks at. It looks at your, uh, all different parts of your body composition and what you have the most of, what is ideal for your height. Uh, and uh, this is something that we use as a way to monitor weight loss. If, if your weight gain needs more treatment, then we have you go on a low carb diet. We give you a, a low carb diet to follow. Follow, f do a food diary. Every time you eat something, you have to write it down. That'll make you not eat it. That's first of all. And then we can see what you're eating that is causing you a problem. You, we have you bring it to the next visit. Or if you want to deal with your weight sooner, then we do weight loss visits at two months. Avoid drinking um, alcohol, sugar, 
avoid simple carbohydrates, and avoid um, additives, uh, things that, I mean, prepared foods that are, that are prepared, fast foods, or um, a lot of uh, preservatives are anti-weight loss, so, or they make you gain water weight. Sometimes we use medications such as fenteramine, which is a traditional diet pill. It has its own side effects and is not appropriate for many people. But we also use metformin because metformin decreases your insulin resistance and helps you burn calories faster. The new medications, Victoza, Ozempic, and uh, Ribelis, are wonderful and effective, and they work great, but at this time, they're very, very, very expensive. And so unless someone has diabetes, it won't be paid for by your insurance. So we try to um, pick those patients whose insurance will pay for this, uh, unless they have an extraordinary, an extraordinary amount of money that we don't even suggest this issue. So we try to work with our t testosterone pellet patients to help them achieve their ideal weight. And eventually that will happen that they just, many of our patients just are in a hurry. So this is, these are the things that we go through with our patients in the first four months, all of which are reversible or treatable. And these are, the reason I wanted to talk about it was to make you feel better about these things, understand them. And if they happen to you, which they don't happen to everybody. In fact, they don't happen to many of our patients. Many of our patients have not one thing that, that they, to complain about, and they come in and they're ecstatically happy because all their symptoms are gone. So I don't want to give the wrong picture. I just want to be honest and transparent about what are the things that can happen that we deal with that will go away, and then we will talk about the things that we deal with long term in some of our patients at our, at our next HealthCast. So please join us then, and then you'll hear the rest of our story. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.